Okay, there's the bronze cell Lowry definition as well, and that's where those substances are going to be donors of H plus. Okay, so we'll talk about that a little bit more probably tomorrow or the next day during pH calculations and stuff like that. But ultimately, uh, Arenas his definition works really good here. Any other properties of metals that we should talk about? Or properties of metals, properties of acids. What about what would what kind of litmus paper would you use to test for an acid? Blue. Yeah, you would use blue litmus because it'll turn red in the presence of an acid. You're going to lose blue litmus paper. Okay. All right, moving on down below here. All right, how do bases taste? Fair. That was better, all right. Chocolate is great, right? Um, that's that's one of the most beautiful. You sure you don't want any Jack? I thought it was great, Jack. Okay. Um, well, I don't have any extra. I took a bigger salt thing. I think really good. Uh, did anybody? Did anybody happen to get any base on their on their hands or anything, or their fingers or anything? What? It was like really dry. Like it didn't really. Sure that sure that wasn't an acid. What? Yeah, yeah. Bases are slippery. Bases are going to be slippery. They're going to feel slippery. I'm not dry. I don't know about that, but like slippery for sure. Okay, because the oils and stuff. The base bases are used to make uh, soap, and the oils and uh, fats that you kind of have, the grease and stuff that you your skin naturally secretes to keep its wonderful glow. Okay, uh, it is. We'll, we'll get dissolved a little bit and like turned into soap by the base when it comes in contact with it. Okay. Uh, I'm not entirely sure where Mr. Weber's got that there, so I'm just going to keep on going. <laughs> okay. This is going to be, bases are going to be greater than seven. Okay. On the pH scale. Okay. We have uh, kind of two definitions here. So the arenas base definition, what do you, what do your bases produce in solution? Hydroxide ions. Good. Yeah, OH minus is hydroxide ions. Okay, but when it comes to Bronze and Lowry, their definition, okay, they're going to be accepting H pluses in solution. Okay, bases are things that accept H plus in solution. All right. Okay, so. All those are good examples of bases, bleach, you know, drain cleaner, ammonia, uh, glass cleaner, right? A lot of cleaners are very basic. Um, you know, don't ever use drain cleaner. we we'll use Drano. we we'll use any of that stuff. Okay, it's pretty nasty stuff. And if you happen to have a clog, you're better off trying to remove it mechanically, okay? Like with a plunger or with a snake that goes down the drain because you end up having to call the plumber or end up having to take apart the plumbing, having to deal with the drain all that's down there is going to make it a major problem. Okay, and your plumber will charge you more money. All right, yes? So, what would happen if you put like, I mean, like battery and like bleach? Uh, for a long time? I don't know. I don't know. You got it. Like the battery is also encased in a, right? It's not like it's just the ass is not like exposed. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, you've seen some of those, uh, <laughs> some of those uh, cigarette, those vapor cigarette things, right? And the fire. Did you see that on Facebook? It was all over the Facebook. Yeah. You guys don't even get on Facebook anymore. Where the guy's like pants got on fire because he was. His, uh, the cigarette he had in there, the batteries, the lithium batteries he had in there exploded and then caught on fire. 
and I, it was doing its own fire. So, uh, yeah, don't smoke here. Okay. All right. So anyway, uh, pH scale. Let's go ahead and look at the pH scale. Acids are less than seven. Strong acids have a pH that's less than two. If you're a base, if you're a base, you have a pH greater than seven, and if you're a strong base, you have a pH is greater than twelve. Typically. Okay. If you're neutral, you have pH seven. Okay. All right, you're on. All right, so why don't you guys complete? I'll give you a minute here to complete the next, the back of that page, real quick. Start us off here, Brennan. Uh, acid. Acid. Kirkmeyer, number two. Base. Anthony? Uh, nope. Not for three. <laughs> Produces H in solution. Oh, this is uh, acid. This acids, yep. Uh, acids. Slippery. And this one, I wasn't clear on that. That one's full. That, that could be trouble. Uh, sorry. Produces OHs, Miles. Uh, example is salt from Saba. Base. An example is your gastric juices or Acid, yeah, you have hydrochloric acid in your belly. What's up? Uh, you can get both. You bases are going to hurt you as well. Yeah, those are so will acids. Acids, it's going to be trouble. Okay. I recorded that. So you can go back and find it later. Okay. Uh, number ten accepts H pluses. <laughs> Can be measured by the pH scale, Greta. Oh. All right, vinegar, made of acetic acid, Brennan. Okay. Here's five percent acetic acid solution. That's what gives it that soury taste and smell. Oh yeah. Michael. Base. Base. Acid. That's uh, not phosphoric acid and pop is what your dentist is really should be worried you about, not really the sugar. The acid is trouble. It dissolves your enamel. I grab that. Yeah. Baking soda? Nice. Oh. How's it going? Okay. Okay, what price? Here you go. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Yes, it does. It does have to be exactly seven to be neutral. It can be close, but only it's neutral when it's seven. Okay. Uh, Windex. Alright. Alright, let's keep on keeping on.
Set. All right, so Arita is, this is the most simple uh, definitions of acids and bases. These guys, acids are going to produce H pluses in solution. All right, bases are going to produce OH minuses in solution. Okay, so if you put HF into solution, hydrofluoric acid, it's going to break up into H plus and F minus. Okay, just like RBOH in solution will break up into RB uh, plus and OH minus. So typically, when you have an arenous acid, that means that the H is out front. Okay, If you've got an arenous base, you've got hydroxide in it. It's that simple Okay, for these guys. For bronze it might be a little different. Okay, bronze encompasses more than just these guys. All right. So if we look at these, all you got to do is look at the compound and find either a hydrogen out front or the hydroxide ion in it, and you can tell if it's an acid or a base, right? So NaOH, what is that? It's a base. H2SO4, it's an acid, sulfuric acid. KOH, base, it's got OH in it. HNO3. Acid. There we go. Okay. What's that? Because the pH is a log base scale. It's a log base time. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So down below here, these are your typical or classic neutralization reactions. Okay, because they all are made of an acid and a base, and you'll notice all of them produce water, all of them produce water and a salt, okay, which is just an ionic compound. All right, a salt is just an ionic compound, like just because it's sodium chloride, yeah, that's salt, like how you normally think about salt on your table, but salt is an ionic compound, okay? It's a very simple name for an ionic compound. So when you're looking at these ones, like right HCl plus NaOH, that we'll do that one a, a few times in this class. Base, water, right, and then a salt. This one, acid, base, salt, and water. They don't have to be necessarily in the same order, right? We got a base here. We're adding some acid. Oh, we get out of salt and water, right? Okay, that's always our product. That's always salt and water is always our product from the reaction of an acid and a base and water. Uh, well, something also to, to consider here is strong acids and strong bases. Okay, and those are going to be really important. So when we talk about, maybe I'll just add a quick page here real fast. Strong verse, because we have time in this class, weak.
Okay, something that happens, if we have a strong acid or a base, that means it completely dissociates in solution. What does it mean to dissociate yourself? Your parents might come home and they might not like one of your friends or maybe your boyfriend, okay? And you've got it and they're, they're telling you, you know what, you really should dissociate yourself from them. Yeah, right? You don't want to be part of them anymore, okay? So rather than telling your boyfriend or girlfriend that you're going to break up, you guys are going to dissociate. Sounds more sophisticated. <laughs> they won't know what you're talking about, though. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? See? It totally makes sense, okay? So completely dissociates. That means they break up. <laughs> Break up into ions. One hundred percent. Okay. Like HCl. H plus and Cl minus, right? So if I were to draw these arrows appropriately in terms of the equilibrium, it would be like Right, I got, and then that's my little arrow going in the reverse direction. Doesn't even exist. Okay. Equilibrium lies all the way to the right. All right, so the K for the K for these are much much bigger than large. Okay, they're really big for strong acids or strong bases. They're really large. Right? Because remember, K is products over reactants. All right? We're going to be dealing with equilibrium constants again here. Okay? K is products over reactants. The, the K, EQ, the equilibrium constants for these are really, really large. Okay? So they totally break up in solution. doesn't matter if it's strong acid or base. They totally dissociate. Okay? If they're weak... Does not dissociate much at all. Okay. Usually it's much, it's like less than 5% typically. Less than 5% of it will dissociate into its ions. Okay, so an example of a weak acid might be like acetic acid, vinegar. It, some of it breaks up into H plus and, and acetate, but a real small amount of it does. Okay, it's K. All right, the K for this guy is actually equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. small number, right? So the equilibrium lies over here on the reactant side. Pretty much all stays together just like this. A real small amount of it produces H plus and acetate ion solution. So it's still acidic. It still makes H pluses in solution. Okay, but it's just really weak. Okay, but I will say this. Just because something is considered a strong acid or a weak acid Okay, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's like super dangerous or not dangerous. Does that make sense? Like, okay, HF, hydrofluoric acid, that's considered a weak acid. However, with the right concentration, it can be very dangerous. They use that stuff to etch glass. Okay, frost on glass. Okay. They can't store it in glass bottles and stuff like that. It's got to store plastic and things like that. Okay. So, just because it's weak doesn't mean, like, when we, uh, did you guys do the agmosis lab in biology? I know some of you did, right? Okay. We use vinegar to dissolve away the eggshell. All right. Acetic acid to dissolve away the eggshell. All right. If we left you in there long enough, acetic acid would do some damage. Okay. Should try it with. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking Bad. 
Yes. Like in the first season when they had to use the assets of his own word up looking funny. Right. Mm-hmm. And then it didn't go real well because yeah. it actually ate away the tub. Yeah, because it's porcelain. Right. Yeah, trouble. Right. So here is a list. I'm giving you a list right here of these strong acids and bases. These are all of them. This is it. It's worth knowing them. You'll have to know them for AP, but it's pretty easy. So there you go. So what you'll notice about the bases is they are all of the group one hydroxides, right? Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. All right. And cervaca, strontium, calcium, and barium. Okay. So Mr. Baca, you can call him Sir Baca. He's the base master. He doesn't know what I'm talking about at all, though, so if you say that to him. <laughs> Sir Baca. Okay. All right. So there you go. Strong verse week. Questions about that? Great. Put that over there. Okay, let's do some naming. Naming of acids and bases. I got some of our rules here. What? Did we kind of do some of this naming of acids and bases a little bit? Okay, so this should be a quick review then. So we'll spend just a minute here just to, just to remind you. Bases, nothing new, just normal, right? Name it just like you've been naming ionic compounds, all right? Sodium hydroxide, and AOH, okay? So... Maybe just like you have been for the acids. If you just have a binary compound where it's just hydrogen and some other elements, say HX or something, right? That's an example of that. Uh, you're going to use the hydroic acid, so HCl. You put the hydro, and then take off the IDE to put on the ic acid part. Very last rule here. You're looking at polytonic ions. Okay, so any of the polytonic ions in the back of your purple sheet there, alphabet of hydroxide. Right? Uh, you're talking about two rules there. So, kind of the example here HNO3. Okay, that's nitrate. So you take off the ATE and you put on the ic acid. So if you ate it, it's icky. Okay. Since you may not remember that. If you ate it, it's icky, so you put on the ic acid for that, nitric acid. All right. HNO2, though, however, is nitrite, I T E. So it turns into O U S, okay, nitrous acid. So tomorrow we'll do some more pH calculations and stuff. Uh, Friday, the quiz will be over properties, pH calcs, uh, naming, that sort of stuff. Okay, it should not take us a whole period on Friday by any means. 
to push it takes 10 to 15 minutes max. Okay. Uh, then next week, so then we'll do some titration stuff on Friday as well. We'll probably do some titration stuff. Maybe we might start that stuff, titration stuff, on Thursday, finish it up on Friday. Then we'll be ready for our big, big lab next week. Okay. Uh, and we'll start that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And if we need any extra, still need to do something, we can have Thursday as well. But we'll also take the quiz on Thursday, too, over titrations, pH. And that's kind of like acid base part unit part one. And we'll take a 20 for free break. Okay. And then we'll start it up again when we come back from free break. Yourself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.